welcome to Carry the Fire Ministries. I'm Jenny Collins. Welcome back to our last uh, session on what it means to carry the fire. Last time we looked at the story of Secretariat and how he ran his race and he was the fastest race horse because of this enlarged heart that he got. And um, and so this is this is going to follow on from um, from that that one that, that we were uh, talking about that we, God needs a people with an enlarged heart um, and how this day God is raising up an army of burning ones, a people who will have the fire of God inside of them, a people who will bring heaven to earth and bring the heart of God to all people, a people who are so intimate with Jesus that as he did, they only do what they see the father doing. And uh, in Isaiah 9, verses 6 to 7, it's a, a passage that's read at Christmas normally, but it's such great words for all year round. And so it says, for a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. And so this passage speaks of this unchanging God that we serve. He is still a wonderful counsellor. He's still a mighty God, an everlasting father, a prince of peace. And he has an eternal government that exists in heaven and one day that will exist on earth. And, you know, we look at our governments around the world and, and they're just so uh, incompetent and it seems that the, that the chaos reigns. And so this whole thing of, uh, it says the government will rest on his shoulders um, and uh, his government and its peace will never end. I can't wait for that day where Jesus is enthroned and his government and its peace will never end. And in Philippians 3.20, it says, but we are citizens of heaven. That means we are citizens of heaven. Once we've given our lives to Jesus and asked him to be the Lord of our life and walk in his ways, we are you know, we've already been transformed, transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. It says we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives and we eagerly are waiting for him to return as our saviour. And isn't that the truth? Those of us who know the Lord know that he's coming back to have his people and to have his way on the earth. And he will rule with justice and fairness through his people because we are called to change the world in whatever way we can. God is still on the throne and he calls us as his burning ones to carry the fire, to bring heaven to earth. So what exists in heaven? Well, what, all that you would imagine, love, goodness, kindness, justice, beauty, endless creativity, wholeness, peace, hope, joy, riches, satisfaction, praise, righteousness, rest, all the good things that we know and experience here on earth exists in abundance in heaven. So what doesn't exist in heaven? Well, fear doesn't exist. Injustice doesn't exist. Crime, bitterness, sexual immorality, hatred, worry, racial prejudice, slavery, indifference, Hopelessness, captivity, depression, poverty, dissatisfaction, grief, despair, strife, all the things that now make up our world. It seems when we, we talk to people and we, we if you watch the news, this is all that we see. But that doesn't exist in heaven. And so what we need to do is to bring all of the stuff that exists in heaven, all the good stuff, you know, what we just listed, love, goodness, kindness, etc. We are those people who God trusts to bring uh, heaven and all that exists in heaven to earth. Isaiah 61 verses 1 to 3 says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has set, sent me to, con to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. 
he has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favour has come and with it the day of God's anger against their enemies. So you've got the Lord's favour on those who, who belong to him, but you've also got, got God's wrath that is coming on those who reject him. To all who mourn in, Misra, in Israel, sorry, it continues, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. And this is what we're called to do. We are called to be lights in a dark world. We are called to be oaks of righteousness. Now, I don't know about you, but righteousness, justice, fairness, that, that's the thing that, that makes me passionate about the Lord and about wanting these, these things in the earth that we see on our TV screens. There's, there isn't much righteousness. There's, there's not much justice. There's lots of injustice. There's lots of fear and, um, and fear mongering. Uh, you know, and I, I you know, I, I, I don't watch a lot of the news because, I, you know, I, I just get so depressed. But we're called to be oaks. The word says oaks of righteousness. Now, you know how tall an oak tree is. It can be vast and majestic. And that, and yet the Lord calls us oaks of, uh, of righteousness. Now, on the uh, 25th of July, 1961, a guy called Tommy Hicks, you know, he was a friend of Smith Wigglesworth, was given a vision. And this vision was of an, of an awakening giant. And I'm going to read it to you now. And I just think it sums up really the essence of the message that we've been talking about, the car how to carry the fire. And remember, this was in 1961. And I'm just going to read it to you. If you want to see it on, uh, you know, it's available on, on the internet, just put in Tommy Hicks Vision 1961. Um, and this is what, you know, you can follow along. But I'm just going to read it now. And I just want you to listen to it and just imagine what he saw in this vision. So he says, my message begins July 25th, about 2.30 in the morning at Winnipeg, Canada. I had hardly fallen asleep when the vision and the revelation that God gave me, gave to me, came before me. The vision came three times, exactly in detail, the morning of July 25th. 1961. I was so stirred and so moved by the revelation that this has changed my complete outlook upon the body of Christ and upon the last time, the last end time ministry. The greatest thing that the church of Jesus Christ that has ever been given to the church lies straight ahead. It is so hard to help men and women to realise and understand the thing that God is trying to give to his people in the end time. As this vision appeared to me after I was asleep, I suddenly found myself at a great distance. Where I was, I do not know. But as I was looking down upon the earth, suddenly the whole earth came into view. Every nation, every kindred, every tongue came before my sight. From the east and from the west, from the north and the south, and I recognised every country and many cities that I had been in. And I was almost in fear and trembling as I beheld the sight before me. And at that moment, as the earth came into view, it began to lightning and thunder. As the lightning flashed over the face of the earth, my eyes went downwards. I was facing the north. Suddenly, I beheld what looked like a giant. And as I stared and looked at it, I was almost bewildered at the sight. It was so gigantic and so great in stature. His feet seemed to reach the North Pole and his head to the south. Its arms were stretched from sea to sea. I could not even begin to understand whether this was a mountain or whether this, this is, was a giant. But as I watched it, I suddenly beheld this great giant. I could see it was struggling for life, for even, to even live. But his body was covered with debris from head to foot. And at times, this great giant would move its body and act as though it would even rise up at times. And when it did, thousands of little creatures seemed to run away. Hideous looking creatures would run away from this giant. And when he would become calm, they would come back. All of a sudden, this great giant lifted his hand towards the heavens, and then it lifted its other hand. And when it did, these creatures by the thousands seemed to flee away from this giant and go into the darkness and into the night. Slowly, this, giant, this great giant began to rise. And as he did, his head and his hands went into the clouds. As he rose to his feet, he seemed to have cleansed himself from the debris and filth that was upon him. And he began to raise his hands into the heavens as though praising the Lord. 
and as he raised his hands, it was even unto the clouds. Suddenly, every cloud became silver, the most beautiful silver that I have ever known. As I watched this phenomena, it was so great, I could not even begin to understand what it all meant. I was so stirred as I watched it and cried unto the Lord, and I said, O oh Lord, what is the meaning of this? And it felt as if I was actually in the spirit, and I could feel the presence of the Lord, even as I was asleep. And from the cloud, suddenly, there came great drops of liquid light raining down upon the mighty giant. And slowly, slowly, this giant began to melt, began to sink, as it were, into the very earth itself. And as he melted, the whole form seemed to have melted upon the face of the earth. And this great rain began to come down, liquid drops of light, as it were, began to flood the very earth itself. And as I watched this giant, this giant that seemed to melt, suddenly it became millions of people over the face of the earth. As I beheld the sight before me, people stood up all over the world. They were lifting their hands and they were praising the Lord. At that very moment, there came a great thunder that seemed to roar from the heavens. I turned my eyes towards the heavens and suddenly I saw a figure in white, glistening white, and the most glorious thing I have ever seen in all of my life. I did not see the face, but somehow I knew that it was the Lord Jesus Christ. And as he stretched forth his hand, as he did, he would stretch forth his hand upon the peoples and the nations of the world, men and women. As he pointed towards them, this liquid light seemed to flow from his hands into this person and a mighty anointing of God came upon them. And those people began to go forth in the name of the Lord. I do not know how long I watched. It seemed it went into days and weeks and months. And I beheld Christ as he continued to stretch forth his hand. But there was a tragedy. There were many people as he stretched forth his hand that refused the anointing of God and the call of God. I saw men and women that I knew, people that I felt that certainly they would receive the call of God. But as he stretched forth his hand towards this one and towards that one, they simply bowed their heads and began to back away. And to each of those who seemed to bow down and back away, they seemed to go into darkness. Blackness seemed to swallow them everywhere. I was bewildered as I watched it. But these people that he had anointed, hundreds and thousands of people all over the world, in Africa, Asia, Russia, China, America, all over the world, the anointing of God was upon these people as they went forth in the name of the Lord. I saw these men and women as they went forth. They were ditch diggers. They were washerwomen. They were rich men. They were poor men. I saw people who were bound with paralysis and sickness and blindness and deafness. As the Lord stretched forth his hand to give them the anointing, they became well, they became healed, and they went forth. And this is the miracle of it. This is the glorious miracle of it. Those people would stretch forth their hand exactly as the Lord did. And it seemed that there was this same liquid fire that seemed to be in their hand as they stretched forth their hand. They said, according to my word, be thou made whole. As these people continued in this mighty end time ministry, I did not fully realize what it was. And I looked to the Lord and said, what is the meaning of this? And he said, this is that that I will do in the last days. I will restore all that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar. I will restore all that they have destroyed. This, my people in the end time, shall go forth as a mighty army. They will sweep over the face of the earth. As I was at a great height, I watched these people as they were going to and fro over the face of the earth. Suddenly there was a man in Africa and in a moment he was transported in the spirit of God. And perhaps he was in Russia or China or America or some other place and vice versa. All over the world, these people went and they came through fire and through pestilence and through famine. Neither fire nor persecution. Nothing seemed to stop them. Angry mobs came to them with swords and with guns. And like Jesus, they passed through the multitude and they could not find them. But they went forth in the name of the Lord. And everywhere they stretched forth their hand. The sick were healed. The blind eyes were opened. There was no long prayer. And one of the things that seemed after I had reviewed the vision so many times in my mind, and I thought about it so many times, I never saw a church. And I never saw or heard a denomination. But these people were going in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. As they marched forward, everything they did 
as the ministry of Christ in the end times. These people were ministering in the multitudes over the face of the earth. Tens of thousands, even millions, seemed to come to the Lord Jesus Christ as these people stood forth and gave the message of the kingdom, of a coming kingdom in the last hour. It was so glorious. God is going to give the world a demonstration in this last hour, such as the world has never known. These men and women are of all walks of life. Degrees will mean nothing. I saw these workers as they were going forth over the face of the earth. When one would seem to stumble and fall, another would come and pick them up. There was no big I and little you, but every mountain was brought low and every valley was exalted. And they seemed to have one thing in common. There was a divine love that seemed to flow forth from these people as they went together, as they worked together, as they lived together. It was the most glorious thing that I have ever known. Jesus Christ was the theme of their life. As I watched from the heaven itself, there were times when great deluges of this liquid light seemed to fall upon great congregations. And that congregation would lift their hands and seemingly praise God for hours and even days as the spirit of God came upon them. God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And that is exactly the thing that God was doing. And to every man and to every woman that received his power and the anointing of God, the miracles of God, there was no ending to it. And then again, as these people were going about the face of the earth, a great persecution seemed to come from every end of the earth. Suddenly there was another loud clap of, sun of thunder that seemed to resound around the world. And I heard again the voice. The voice seemed to speak. Now, this is my people. This is my beloved bride. And when the voice spoke, I looked upon the earth and I could see the lakes and the mountains. The graves were opened and people from all over the world, the spirits of all the ages seemed to be rising. As they rose from the grave, suddenly all these people came from every direction and they seemed to be forming again. This gigantic body, as the dead in Christ seemed to be rising first, I could hardly comprehend it. It was so marvellous. It was far beyond anything I could ever dream or think of. But as the body suddenly began to form and to take shape again, it took shape in the form of this mighty giant. But this time it was different. It was arrayed in the most beautiful, gorgeous white. Its garments were without spot or wrinkle as the body began to form. And the people of all ages seemed to be gathering into this body. And slowly, slowly, as it began to form up into the heavens, suddenly from the heavens above, the Lord Jesus came and became the head. And I heard another clap of thunder that said, this is my beloved bride in whom I have waited. She will come forth, even tried by fire. This is she that I have loved from the beginning of time. As I watched, my eyes suddenly turned to the far north and I saw seeming destruction, men and women in anguish and crying out and buildings in destruction. Then I heard again the fourth voice that said, now is my wrath being poured out upon the face of the earth. From the ends of the whole earth, the wrath of God seemed to, pour, to be poured out. And it seemed that there were great vials of God's wrath being poured out upon the face of the earth. I can remember it as though it had happened a moment ago. I shook and I trembled as I beheld the awful sight of seeing cities and whole nations going down to destruction. I could hear the weeping and the wailing. I could hear people crying. They seemed to cry as they went into caves, but the caves and the mountains opened up. They leapt into water, but the water would not drown them. There was nothing that seemingly could destroy them. They were wanting to take their life, but they could not take it. Then again, I turned my eyes onto the body, arrayed in the beautiful white garment. Slowly, slowly, it began to rise from the earth. As it did, I awoke. I had seen the end time ministry, the last hour, again on July the 27th at 2.20 in the morning, the same revelation, the same vi vision came exactly as it did before. And I just think that is such an incredible incredible vision of the, the end time ministry and the rapture. I believe that, that when the body came together and met the Lord in the air, that describes the rapture and then the destruction that will come on the earth after the people of God are taken out. And uh, you can, uh, you know, we, we talk about the rapture and, uh, you know, there are signs 
well, there are signs of the end of the time of times in, G, in in Matthew 24. Jesus tells his disciples of the time um, that will happen, what will happen in the in, uh, in the time before he comes back. But before that, we as a as a ministry and, and, and we believe the words, the word of God talks about a rapture and the God, the, the people of God being taken out before uh, God pours out his wrath on the earth. But I just was so encouraged. I, I you know, when I first started uh, looking into this, the, the message that God had given me about carrying the fire many years ago now. And I, 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 I came across this and I, I was just so encouraged because God never changes, does he? He always, always is consistent with the messaging that he, he gives us and the way that he talks throughout the centuries, throughout, you know, you can look back at the hundreds of years and you will find a witness and, and God doesn't leave himself without that witness. So when I saw this and I saw this mighty army that was rising on the earth and doing the miracles that Jesus did, Jesus said, uh, you know, I go away, but when I, you know, I'll send the spirit and you will do greater things than I. And so we've got to ask ourselves, you have to ask yourself, I have to ask myself, will we be a part of this people who are emerging on the earth? Or will we be one of those who God offered to anoint, but who turned away? Will you commit this day to seek God with all your heart to find out all that you hold inside? Will you choose to be an overcomer, part of this great army that is arising in the earth? The Lord will once again make his name famous and he wants to do it through you. And I and yes, we have to be strong. We have to be mature Christians because the times are dark. The darkness is rising in the spirit realm. You know, the enemy knows that his time is short. And so he's coming against the people of Jesus Christ like never before. And so make no mistake, there will be a battle. But you have hold all inside that you need to overcome. We have to keep focusing on Jesus. And yes, the, the enemy will lie to us, but we come back to Jesus and we and we we seek him again for his word on the matter. God would ask you this day, will you carry my fire? A Christian once said to me, I'm not into it to that level. Well, as I've just said, the reality, whether we like it or not, is that we are all in a spiritual battle. And because of the seriousness of the hour, we had better wake up to what is going around, going on around us. Our biblical end time prophecy is being fulfilled almost on a daily basis. The world is in chaos. The, the economic systems are in chaos. You know, um, so much evil and so much uh, rubbish being taught in our schools and so much nonsensical things are going on. And it's all, you know, it's all heading that the world, this chaos is all heading, I believe, to... Um, the, the Antichrist coming through a one world government. We're already talking, uh, you know, everybody's talking about this one world government and um, and it's very real. It's, you know, it's almost here. Um, there's plenty of, 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 of uh, stuff on the, on the internet that you can read um, about the one world government or listen to. Jan Markell uh, Ministries does, um, you know, does a, a lot of, of um, focusing on a one world government and you can see it all around us. And that is exactly what, uh, you know, what the Antichrist will head up. He will be the the um, the head of a world government. And there's lots and lots and lots of signs that are are, you know, happening. But that's for that is for another another time and another message. We are living in the very end of the last days and Jesus is coming back very soon. Hallelujah for us who know him as Lord. And God requires us to be an army that fights, that knows what, that knows the battle that we are in. An army who knows who we are in God, who will wear the armour of God and recognise Jesus as the supreme commander and head of his church. He's looking for a people who will combat the darkness by revealing his light and his glory. He requires a people who will align themselves with the purposes of heaven for this end time generation and who will once again make his name famous in the earth. Are you excited? Do you wanna be part of this great army, the army of God who will rise in the earth and make his name famous? Well, I hope you will. And I hope you've enjoyed this teaching, this six part teaching. We've now come to an end 
and um, it's been great. I've, I've really enjoyed just, uh, you know, doing this teaching and just doing what God's called me to do. So if you've enjoyed it, then share it with your friends. Um, if you want to make a donation to, to the ongoing ministry, then just go to our website and uh, all the details of that, of uh, our ministry is there and how to give. Uh, it will be in the, in the links and uh, at the end. So God bless you. Have a great day. And I hope you've really, really been challenged by this message of, of carrying the fire, knowing who we are. If my people knew what they held inside, they would change the world. God bless. Thank you.